and a good Wednesday afternoon, everybody, to Psalm Series Webinar Number Six: How the Best Partnerships in, in Sleep Dentistry Get It Done. My name is Lewis Myers. I'm the Senior Director of Sales at Somnimed, and I want to introduce Dr. Stacy Lehman and Lori Ledley. Uh, to the call today. This is our last, like I said, our last and final webinar, and we saved the best for last. Um, <laughs> and uh, oh yeah, wanna, I'm so glad you guys have uh, taken a couple minutes out of your afternoon to to uh, to join us, as we have done on our previous five uh, webinars. We're we're living in madness, sheer madness, right now with COVID-19, right? So. Let me just ask the both of you: How are things going um, uh, in in the in the dental sleep practice, Dr. Layman, at the at the sleep center, Lori? How how is everything going? Where were you a couple weeks ago versus where are you this week? Give us give, give us a state of affairs. You go first, Lori. Well, interestingly, uh, we we chose to stay open. Um, I felt like. Preventing heart attacks and strokes was uh, more essential than uh, worrying about a respiratory virus. I'm a respiratory therapist by trade, and uh, we've been battling, you know, viruses that kill people for years. So I was, I, and I'm an immunocompromised person, so I, I definitely was concerned. I don't want, I don't want you guys to think that I'm one of these people that thinks it's hogwash because I do believe it's real. But I just felt like, okay, let's you know, put in infection control places. I was absolutely ready to launch telemedicine. And I had just sent out a newsletter saying what the cash pay price and the next day Medicare said it was covered. So we were already ready. So we did telemedicine. I sent people home that, you know, wanted to be at home or could work at home. And then we just, you know, uh, implemented procedures about wearing masks and checking temperatures. And uh, we stayed open. Um, we were very busy, honestly, in March, uh, the end of March, and even kind of into April, but then our April new patient numbers went down like 50%, because obviously patients aren't going to the physician, so the physician's not referring, but yeah, interestingly, our DME business went like this, because everybody wanted a clean machine, everyone wanted clean, they, all of a sudden, the, the importance of having clean supplies became really important, right? People would like stretch their mask or their hose or whatever uh, out a long time. Um, they made sure that they had a, a working machine. If it was getting close to five years old, they wanted a new one. So that that's another side of the business that was really interesting that here center was like in the tank and therapy was like this. Um, wow. Also, I think that uh, I tried really hard to get the message out to the public that this is a respiratory illness and now more than ever, you need your immune system working optimally. And if you suffer from sleep apnea, now is the time to treat it and don't ignore it. And honestly, what was going on in the media was actually really helpful. Um, I think, not that we were, you know, breaking records or anything, but we, we survived. Um, a lot of our competition closed, uh, which was really helpful for us. We also do pediatrics. So, um, you know, pediatrics need to be treated. You know, there's a lot of acute illnesses in, you know, our pediatrics, these kids that are being born premature and have all kinds of issues, you know, they need studies and they need treatment. Uh, so we, we managed, okay, we did a lot of home sleep tests, a uh, record number of those. Um, I invested in WatchPat um, and, and did some of those because came up with a premium package idea where you could get a televisit, a WatchPat and a televisit follow-up for one price, cash price. If you don't even want to deal with your insurance, here it is. Like, so yeah, we, I, you know, Stacy called me pretty early on and she's like, we're shut down. Like, I just need you to know, I'm sorry, we can't make appliances. Um, but you know, I, I wasn't too worried about it because I knew eventually appliances would be made, you know, and people could do CPAP until the employer or whatever, we figure it out, you know, Let's face it, people have gone with untreated sleep apnea long enough. They can wait a, another month to get an appliance, right? So, yeah, yeah it, I think it was okay. I mean, of course, I haven't been down there and been a part of I mean, I'm sure if you ask all my employees and providers, they give you a whole other story. Um, but my main thing was I didn't want employees or providers working if they were afraid because 
you know, fear transcends into the next person. It's like, I need confident people that are going to not, you know, exude confidence and not fear so that the people wouldn't be afraid. Cause this is, you know, treating sleep apnea is certainly essential. Oh, right. killing a lot more people. Untreated sleep apnea kills way more people than COVID-19. Well, Absolutely. right. We just don't, we don't, nobody thinks of it that way. Yeah. Quick we, question. We, Quick question, um, Dr. Lehman, hang on one second. I just want to ask questions. Uh, Lori, you said mm -hmm. you, you said that um, some competitors closed. Do you mean temporarily or did they go out of business? You know, I don't know for sure who's actually gone out of business. Um, oh. I know that a lot of places closed. I don't know if they've reopened. Okay. I know the hospital, I know the hospital lab, it did reopen, but I don't know if they're gonna, it's been so, there's been so many admissions now. I haven't really heard. I think they are open and they're running. I don't know about some of the smaller places. Stacy might know. I haven't really heard. Um, okay. if the only one I heard about is that Mayo stopped doing in labs um, and then was just doing that watch pat disposable, but yeah. that they had, they were back now, but that they had shut down essentially except for telemedicine and some watch pat disposables. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, we haven't had any cases. No, I mean, none of our employees have had it and we haven't had any patients, you know, report that they've gotten it. So, and we're, I mean, we, we see a high volume in, in the five locations that we have now. So that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. Knock on wood. Like, yeah. yeah. What about you, Dr. Yeah. Lehman? So we, I went into lockdown on about the 15th of March, and I think I called you just right after that. And um, we still had our office open. We had one office, we shut down one, and then we had the other office still open because uh, there's still going to be people that have jaw issues or they have they need an adjustment or whatever on their appliance. It was just mandatory. And so Anitra was just amazing, and she saw patients the whole time. And then I started immediately, I started doing telemedicine visits and it worked really, really well. I mean, I would have, you know, seven to 10 telemedicine visits a day. And I just sat down at eight o'clock in the morning and I got up at five o'clock in the evening. I mean, that's just how it was. And I did device checks. I did new patient consults. I did, um, one week follow-ups we did uh, we did stop home sleep test titration and i think that's on our list to talk about as well we did stop that because we weren't sure about just about sanitizing and everything so we did put that on hold but we got back in the office like normal monday so today is what wednesday oh, nice. third day so it's been good it's been really fine i mean you know we're back like I said, to normal now, as normal as you can be. Very Our good. New normal. Yeah, yeah, it is a new normal. Um, just want to uh, remind the audience, you have a little box um, that's called questions and you can type anything in there that you would like to ask. And I'll get to those toward the, the end of our time together. Um, you know, the the title of the series was, was Sleep Partners, you know, which, uh, which was cute to begin with, but you know this is a this is a unique call. In three of our six uh, webinars, we featured a dentist and their top referring sleep physician, and then uh, two of our webinars featured a sleep dentist along with his. Um, in, in both cases, it was his um, sales outside sales and marketing full time employed uh, professional out there calling on on sleep docs all day every day, and then and then this is a unique. This is unique, obviously, in that Lori is a respiratory therapist, the founder and president of a of a large multi-center sleep practice, sleep center. Um, so so you, you guys are different, right? You guys are, are, are a unique partnership. Um, tell us a little bit about how it works and patient flow back and forth, the bi-directional referrals and how all of it, how does it all work between you guys? Well, it started when I had a general dental office. And when I started, first started doing dental sleep, um, I needed 
a place to refer my patients, right? I mean, I was screening, my gosh, Lori, there were, when I first started, it was crazy the number of referrals that I was sitting out. I was probably referring three to five a day out of hygiene. Because when you really accept that role uh, in a dental office, it's huge. And so I just want to jump in with that really quick and say one of the biggest mistakes dentists make is they go to the the referral, the, the sleep centers and the sleep physicians, and they, they tell them, send me your patients that fail CPAP, send me this. No, 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 You need to send your patients to them, right? Um, let them get to know you, uh, let them start testing your patients. Then the ones that need an oral appliance, you start treating them and then that back and forth can, can begin. That's one of the biggest mistakes dentists make. These guys don't want to talk to you. They don't want to send their patients to you. They don't know who you are. They don't understand oral appliance in most cases. You, you have to send them your patients to start that interaction for sure. And that's definitely where, where we were. Now, at this point, I don't have a dental practice. So she doesn't get quite the referrals from me necessarily. But one thing I've definitely cap is that even though I do the titration studies, we don't charge for them. Patient is, doesn't even get the results. They get a pass or fail. And it's part of our protocol that that patient has to go back to Valley to have their follow-up confirmation sleep study, their official sleep study, mm -hmm. right? And so it kind of keeps the, the process between the two of us and keeps the patient in, in treatment and they don't fall through the cracks like they used to, which is really nice. But that's, I just had to say that about that because it's such a big thing. But I think, um, again, I can't treat everybody, right? An oral appliance isn't gonna treat everyone. It doesn't work that way. Um, Lori also is part of the Inspire world, which is just another tool in our tool belt, which is awesome. So when I have a patient that fails CPAP, and they failed my oral appliance, now they can go back to Lori and be introduced into Inspire. So it's just a really good multidisciplinary kind of relationship where we, we definitely want the patient to be treated. So there's a couple of things that I, I want to point out that was my attraction to Dr. Lehman. And first of all, I'm a sleep tech as well, registered sleep tech. And we would see these patients coming in for studies with this, like, I don't even know who made it. Like, so for me, it was really important that um, a dentist was making the devices that was board certified in dental sleep medicine. And Stacy did her, um, you know, rotations with us and got her hours um, because well, there's a lot required. of people. It's not even required yeah. anymore. It's so sad. And this is, I know, and this is the thing, like, I'm, I mean, I'm from the sleep world and I don't like what dentists are doing out there. And I don't like the fact that you guys are doing free home sleep tests because technically it has to be ordered by a physician, but whatever, if it's free, it's free. I mean, the bottom line is these people need to be looked at eventually do what you want to do with them, but get their efficacy done in a, in a sleep center that's accredited of, of someone that knows what they're doing because um, I also am a patient. I have severe sleep apnea. My HI is 63. I've had an oral appliance. Um, I've had three oral appliances, but um, sadly I've grown out of them, meaning my apnea has gotten worse and worse. Um, I cannot wear CPAP. I've tried and tried. And so now my rescue therapy has been Inspire and it's finally working. I've gotten my HI from 63 to 2.2. Um, I could never do that with an oral appliance. I couldn't even do that with CPAP because it leaked and it was just crazy. So um, it's exciting for me that there's so many different therapies. And, and if you look at the patient, okay, if we all go back to like, why are you doing this? If you're just doing this for the money, I don't want to work with you. Like we need to care about the patient, the outcome of the patient, because if you care about the outcome of how that patient does overall, then, I mean, obviously, I, I listen, I could have a brick and mortar building with just a dentist. I could hire a dentist tomorrow and put five brick and mortar dental buildings and make more money than I make doing CPAP. But it, 
I have her. I have I have other, you know, dentists that really care and are doing a good job. So why do that? I did try to bring a dentist in um, and he did a great job, but it's just, it was too many steps for us to try to do. And, you know, to get paid by insurance was really difficult for, for us because of the way the IDTF and stuff. I really need a standalone dental practice mm. um, to be able to do it. But, you know, um, people are getting, we're, we're, we have, you know, a good field here in the Phoenix area and Dr. Lehman has always done a great job. And I mean, they're out there, her people are competing against me, send to us, you know, but I don't care. There's enough fish in the sea. If your heart is for the undiagnosed patient, you, you don't care, right? Like, I mean, meaning you don't care if you have people out there competing against you. My thing is the more people that we diagnose, Okay, whether she diagnoses them or I diagnose them, the more lives we change, the better. That if now, that's I do if not true. Diagnose. What's that? I do not diagnose. No diagnosing. We don't and, and that is something you brought that up, Lori, and I think we should talk about that. Is here in town there is a provider that provides free diagnostic sleep study if you get the oral appliance from them, right? So it totally bypasses and it's a shame. It's a mail who's order. Who's ordering that? Yeah, yeah, see, that's the thing. Yeah, so there's, it's the wild it needs west to be ordered it by a medical doctor. Yeah, a sleep yeah. study, so, no matter whether it's a home sleep test, it has to be ordered by a medical provider. Yeah. Really, really, especially for insurance purposes. I mean, there's no question. And and unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation out there in the dental world. And and let me just explain something. I have this amazing relationship with Lori, and we work so well together. And if I were to bypass her and I were to do home sleep testing, diagnosing and home sleep testing by diagnosing her her uh, uh, patients, why would she ever refer to me? Why would she ever refer to me? So people that are doing that and they're mm -hmm. bypassing their, their sleep centers and their MDs, you're not establishing those relationships yeah. in, this, in this field. That's just, it's just insane to me. Why would you do it? Not to mention you're taking all of the medical risk onto yourself. Why would any dentist choose to do that? It just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Refer your patients out to a sleep physician, get your patient diagnosed, if the patient qualifies for oral appliance, great. Treat the patient, communicate with the sleep physician, make sure they understand you know what you're doing and you're not just giving them appliance and saying, here, see you later, hope it works. That's not how it works, by the way. And if, if it works, wonderful. If you've done everything you can and you can't get it to work, you have someone to help you at that point. You send them back and they can figure out another way to treat the patient. If you're just bypassing the sleep lab and the sleep position doing mail order home sleep testing, that to me is an issue. And especially in the long run, you're not helping yourself at all. It feels like you are because you're, you're getting the patient through really quick and getting them in an appliance. But in the long run, you're truly not helping yourself. Developing a relationship with someone like the, the relationship we have, it's mutually beneficial. She refers to me. I refer to her, and more importantly than anything is our patients are always in the system and being treated and taken care of. I mean, that ultimately is the most important thing. Well, and sleep patients need managed for life. They These are patients for life. You, you just brought it up before we went live. You know, you saw a patient who had a device that was 12 years ago. I mean, sleep patients need managed for life. This is sleep disorders, you know, will take years off your life if you're not, if they're not being treated appropriately. And, you know, you can't just give a patient a, an appliance and then say, see you later. They Happens might gain often. weight in two years. They might gain weight. They might lose weight. They, you know, their, their health status changed. They need to be managed. Somebody needs to be managing that and making sure that the treatment that was prescribed is still working or working at all a lot of dentists or, the patient and appliance and they don't make the patient understand that it is a requirement to have follow-up sleep testing it is so mm -hmm. important to make sure the patient understands that at the beginning and i always say look my first patient was my dad 
I put him in an appliance and his snoring stopped. He felt better. Everything was awesome. I tested him. I had been making him worse. If you're not, his apnea was worse. If you're not doing testing to confirm that the appliance is working, then you're hurting yourself and your patient. And again, our policy is that we do it just to know when to send the patient back to Valley to have their confirmation, their follow-up sleep study to their official sleep study that's read by a board certified sleep physician, the person that's managing their sleep. I'm managing their oral appliance for their sleep, right? But their, their sleep physician is truly the person who's managing their medical condition. And if we can all play our role and play our role responsibly, then the patient gets treated properly and everybody benefits. Lori, have you ever um, have you ever had a discussion with any of your referring physicians um, about about oral appliance therapy efficacy and compliance and uh, any non-believers out there that you've actually kind of inserted yourself in and your belief in oral appliance therapy into that discussion? Uh, has that ever well, kind of come up between you and your physicians? No, because we manage all our patients from, so we have, um, we have a, a staff of board certified sleep physicians and nurse practitioners. Oh, yeah. So we manage the sleep patient from A to Z in, in our location. So, which the referring physicians love, they don't want to deal with it. They have enough. They see, they get five minutes to see that patient. Dealing with sleep is not, you need more than five minutes. Um, they, they're just happy that, that we're figuring it out. Um, and, and that they know that we're the experts on that, like determining what the best thing is for the patient. Because if we have a non-compliant patient with CPAP, um, and we say, well, you know, you could try, these are your options. You could try an oral appliance. Um, it, it may not get you to a curative level, but it'll be better than what you are now because you're not wearing it. You know, so it's just it's just nice that, you know, we let them know what their options are as far as. Uh oh. Lori, uh, Stacy, can you hear her? Mm -mm. Lori, we lost your audio. Uh-oh. Nothing yet. Well, one thing I do want to say, too, is, you know, we've come along, until she gets back up, we've come a long way as far as um, the physician being on board. Oh, there you are. Can I hear you? I now? don't know what happened. I, I, yeah, I lost you guys. There you go. Oh, we got you now. now. Could you, could you hear question. me? We, no, we couldn't hear no. you. Could you hear us? Okay. Oh, interesting. Well, Lori, I have a question for you. So you guys are very pro um, oral appliance. You're that's that's you guys are believers of that. So what made you become a believer in that? Like, was it just repetitive seeing studies where that did work? I mean, what was it for you guys? Um, I'm not sure. I think just, you you know, we've learned that we see it. I mean, I, I saw it in the sleep lab, you know, people coming in when I worked, you know, as a tech, um, efficacy studies. Um, I think all of our physicians have worked in sleep centers and seen efficacy. Um, I don't think, you know, even this, we just, you know, we just know that AHIs below X are going to do well with an oral appliance and we give patients a choice. Most people are going to pick an oral appliance over a mask on their face, you know. Um, so, are any of it's, your, it's easy. Are any of your okay. physicians or any of the other personnel in treatment with an oral device? I don't know, actually. Do you, maybe, yeah. I. No, I've treated I, some people there. Um, I wouldn't know. Okay. I think you know, even without that, again my pearl you wanted us to give a pearl today my pearl is two things do not go to the sleep physician or the sleep lab and ask them for their patients refer your patients to them mm -hmm. and then when you get the patient back treat them with the neural appliance communicate with the physician and then show them that you know what you're doing when you send the patient back for the follow-up study and the patient is under five ahi or in a good position, 
now you've proven to that sleep physician that you know what you're doing, right? And so they're going to start referring more patients to you because they're going to say, hey, well, what do you do? You know, yeah. You have to have a, a place to send people who are just snorers. You know, we have people that, you know, don't meet criteria for CPAP. They need, they need something because they're bed partners, you know, sleeping in the other room. You know, they need something. So there's a lot of opportunity. Um, and I agree. Don't, yeah, I have had that a lot where they call me up. Can I meet with you? And, you know, I want to mm -hmm. talk about you sending your patients to us. And it's like, how about you just send me who you, and I'll send them back to you. Right. Like I'll, I'll make sure that you get them back, but if they need CPAP and the thing is, is if you're a dentist out there, you need to understand that CPAP is a treatment of choice for people with moderate to severe sleep apnea, not like an oral appliance is for mild to moderate. Like we're not going to, so you can't be mad at us if we put your patient on CPAP if they need it or if that's right. what they wanted. Right. Well, it's um, reimbursement. That, if, if your patient is severe for sure, they need to have, and a lot of insurance companies are now, I mean, I'm uniquely positioned where I have go-go billing. Right. And so We've been in the medical billing for dentists world for a very long time, and insurance companies are getting more difficult. They want that CPAP trial, and especially if a patient's severe. If a patient is severe, I want them to try CPAP. Again, if my intention is money, I don't want them to do CPAP, right? If my intention is the treatment for this patient, the best treatment for this patient, then they should go to a CPAP first. And insurance is also dictating that. And so they will deny pre os and they will deny your claim if the patient has not tried CPAP and they're severe. Why wouldn't you just do that? It's a great trial. I can tell you this, if the patient isn't gonna like CPAP, they're gonna be an amazing oral appliance patient. Once they've tried CPAP and they don't like it, they're gonna come back and they're not gonna have all the, you know, they're not gonna bitch and complain. They're gonna love their oral appliance. So why would anybody fight that? Lori, does, uh, do you have an established, uh, like a rescue pathway for uh, patients who discontinue PAP? Oh, for sure. If they're, if they're struggling, you know, we give them the options of oral appliance or Inspire, depending on, you know, Inspire is only for moderate to severe. Um, so yeah, there, it, it's all discussed and, you know, we just monitor and we, I even have a respiratory therapist that all they do is work with people on mass fitting. You know, they come in and they see, you know, he sees a schedule all day, every day of just people having issues with CPAP. And so we try to work with people and get, get through those. And then if they, they can't do it, we just try to find another option. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, like I said, lots of, lots of fish in the sea. I'm curious if there's um, people that don't want to send to sleep for some reason, like are do you not want to send to sleep because you feel like, oh, they're never going to send me the patient back? Like, I, yeah. I think that there's more opportunity for sleep to send. If you develop a relationship like Stacy and I have, you'll receive more than you'll probably refer. You know, if you have a really good center that you work with, especially if it's comprehensive like ours, you know, we're doing everything from A to Z. And I know that's really hard to find, um, but. It, it, there's probably something out there or a physician that really works with this patients more. Um, the thing is the days of see your sleep doctor, get a CPAP, or excuse me, see your doctor, get a study, get a CPAP, one follow-up, you're done or over. That's over because insurance has mandated that we prove compliance. So as soon as these people are compliant, their mach machines are repossessed and then they're left with the patient that's you know, un, untreated. Right. So the providers that are in sleep medicine truly care about that treatment and outcome of the patient. It's up to them to figure it out, which right. is why I said patient for life. Right. No question. Yep. And I'm, I mean, like one of them, I was like on CPAP, went to an oral appliance, went back to CPAP, went to a different oral appliance, went back to CPAP, and now I have Inspire. So it's like, you know, and you, have to have your team. you have to have your team. So I'm one person in a team. So there's, there's Lori, myself, and then now that Inspire, we've got Dr. Weiner, who is the Inspire guru, and he's the, 
the Inspire surgeon, and then we have other ENTs for the upper airway and nasal patency issues. I mean, we have our, you know, our position within mm -hmm. this realm of treatment, and you need to find your position and not think that you are it because you aren't. You yeah. can't be the sole person in this. It's just too complicated. There's too many things. It's just too much. And every patient's anatomy is different, right? Every, every palate patient. is different. Every, patient, every tongue is different. We'll every see, is different. I mean, we've seen a patient where I there are five H 5.2 AHI, and I can't get them treated. I can't. I actually am making them worse. And then I had a patient a couple of weeks ago that was 103, and I took her down to a two, right? Every single patient is different. Every single patient. And so you just have to follow certain rules, work with your team, and and if everybody's on the same page, get the patient treated and get them to, you know, to be happy and healthy again, then that's that's the best way to go. It all works out in the end. Laurie, what level of education on oral appliance therapy takes place in your center before they're, they make their way over to Dr. Lehman's office? Um, I think pretty much they just discuss the options. It's always in a sleep study report. I think every single, Stacy can back me up on this. I believe they do recommend treatments and, and depending on their AHI, they, they mention oral appliance therapy, mandibular advancement. I don't know what they say. Um, but they do discuss the options every, so every single patient that gets a, a in the lab study or a home sleep test has a follow-up visit uh, with a sleep provider and the options are discussed with you know, what would you like to do. Yeah. And we have, yeah, we show, yeah, we show the device and there's different ones and yeah. And we do, and we, we have do lunch and learns with her providers Yep. so that they're mm -hmm. up to speed on the newer appliances and, and how it works and when you can use it and when you can't. So, yeah. Okay. I want to do more health talks like we did, me and you, where we showed the different devices and people could learn um, ab about the different things. Like we did that more. I think education, ed educating the public on right. different things really, really helps as well. Absolutely. Lori, what percentage of your of your orders for overnight studies come from sleep specialists as opposed to GPs, cardiologists? So I have um, we have a big percentage of probably eighty percent of our studies come from referring physicians, and that's like anything from family practice, ENT. Uh, endocrinology, cardiology, everything. It's basically everything. Um, and then again, they see a cons they have a consult first. Uh, and then our board certified sleep physicians are the ones or our nurse practitioners ordering that specific study and following up. I do have um, about five different practices, maybe more just thinking off the top of my head, where um, they're board certified in sleep and they have a contract with me and they refer their patients just for studies. They read their own studies and they follow up with the patients themselves. Um, that's probably, I would say, so 75 and then that's probably 5%. And then the other 15% are direct referrals where the patient just contacts us themselves. How many mm -hmm. dentists do you have referring? I mean, that to me seems oh, like the yeah. number one referral source. I have to look. I wish I knew that answer, and I, I don't. I'd have to ask my marketing team, but we have a fair amount of dentists that refer, and then we just always make sure we refer back to that dentist. You know, it's flagged. There's like a pop-up so that everybody who opens that chart knows that this is Dr. Lehman's patient, you know. Yep. Awesome. So in this in this world of, of, of COVID-19, Lori, what, what have you, what have you, been required to do there in the sleep center in order to, you know, make sure everything is is a okay and uh, what has you changed? You know, nothing, nothing, nothing's changed any differently. I mean, we are governed by the Arizona Department of Health, and we're under strict, you know, infection control guidelines. 
Um, I myself have made the decision to check temperatures uh, on every person that comes in and out the buildings. Um, we're asking our staff to wear masks just to help people coming in to feel better. We're not making patient wear masks, but we just want the patients to uh, feel more comfortable. Um, but yeah, we, I mean, we're just going by the guidelines of uh, uh, AZDHS and um, no, nothing's changed. You know, uh, I know that there's this big thing about aerosolized bacteria and virus in the air, but guess what? We've been doing that for years. We've been aerosolizing bacteria and viruses in the year, in the air for years. You know, every time you walk in and you unhook that patient from their CPAP, you, you know, you have to turn it off first. Like you're not going to blow it throughout the room. Yeah. There's, you just, anyway, I, my first job was taking a VA hospital full 16 ventilator patients that all had pseudomonas. Like oh, yeah. you learn how to protect, you learn how to protect yourself. You, you know, yeah. you just yeah. learn, you know, you, you wash your hands, you wear a mask, you don't touch your face, you don't touch your eyes. You just, you know, we, I just encourage everybody to just be very safe. It's all you can do. But no, I didn't, I didn't go by any of the American Academy of Sleep Medicine recommendations, which was to close and to not do CPAP titrations. I, di I didn't do it because I, I believe we, there's other things that we're battling against at the same time. And, and I think it's more important that we save people from heart attack and strokes. I love that. Great. I love that. Dr. Lehman, do you got, have you instituted any kind of measures? I, I, I had my hygiene appointment just late, late last week and, you know, I had to sit in my car and wait for them to come get me, came, took my temperature in the car and yeah, it's uh, my personal dentist has changed everything about what they do. So the, the only things that we've done differently are, I mean, the two offices are a little bit different. One office is set up to individual rooms with doors, no big deal. So um, we, we take temperatures, we wear masks, you know, it's typical infection control, yeah. just like Lori said, keep your hands out of your nose and your mouth and your eyes. <laughs> um, uh, we're not in the full PPE craziness. We wear masks, glasses, goggles, whatever, gloves, that's it. I don't go home and hug my kids. I go home, take my clothes off and, and then change clothes, right? So just, it's it, especially dentists, we are like the masters of PPE. We have been dealing with PPE since the AIDS epidemic. I mean, honestly, I mean, it, it's ridiculous for everybody to be so crazy about it. We've known how to do this and how to take care of ourselves and keep ourselves from getting all these different infections. So we do take temperatures. Um, we do wear masks. We are limiting the number of patients in a room. Uh, we don't want multiple patients at a time sitting around each other. So we're, we're our schedule is a little bit slower or more streamlined, but it's really, I mean, again, we just started back Monday and it's been like normal. It's just been easy. Normal. Normal's good. Normal is really yeah, we're, good. Like, we're asking we normal. people not to come, we're asking them to come alone. Like we're asking people not to bring their, you know, their kids or another person, like come to your appointment alone, mm -hmm. you know, unless you need someone to help interpret or, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, we're, uh, pretty much the same, same. Yep. People, people need their health care, and um, I think it's important that we get the message out there for people not to be afraid. You need, to be, you need to be afraid of, of uh, not getting your like me. I've been in here needing my dental appointment for the past. I was late, and then this happened, and I couldn't go. So I've been sitting here going, oh, I'm gonna get cavities. I didn't have any, <laughs> thank goodness. But I went today, and they, the hygienist actually gave me a hard time, Lori. You need to be wearing a mask. There's all kinds of stuff flying in the air in this office. I'm like, okay, I'll wear a mask. <laughs> but yeah, you know. Good, good, yeah. good. Um, we've been going for 40 minutes. Unbelievably oh time flies when you're having fun. I've got a question here asked by John Boozis, Dr. Boozis, I imagine. Lori, what would you say your compliance rates are with PAP? Oh, we have a really good compliance rate, actually. And now you have to remember, okay, when you look at compliance, the ones who aren't compliant eventually drop off, okay? So I think last time I looked, we were at like 96%. We have really great compliance. But the ones that aren't compliant eventually drop off. So when you when you ask people what their compliance numbers are, remember, the ones that drop off are no longer in the number. But 
we, uh, we, like I said, we're following those people constantly to try to make sure they get some kind of treatment. We have a really good follow-up program. We don't want anybody left behind. How do you, uh, Lori, how do you define compliant? I know, that, you know, depending on what clinical study you read, it, 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 it's defined differently oftentimes. What, what is your typical belief in, in, in what one would be, how, how one would define compliance with the CPAP? So I believe ours is four hours a night for at least six nights. I don't even, I don't even know. It's something like four hours a night, maybe seven nights a week. I can't, I'm okay. sorry. I, I'm like the wrong person to ask some of this stuff. Okay. Uh, but I think it's four. I know it's four hours a night. If you're not aware of four, four hours a night, night, five yeah. nights a week, I think. Thank you. Thank you. That's probably what it is. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, there's no other questions just yet. Uh, I encourage everybody out there in our in our audience to ask anything um, if you feel so inclined uh, here in our in our waning last couple of minutes. Um, you guys have anything else? Uh, again, the it was all about the magic of your partnership and why it works so well, and the importance of Dennis getting out there and developing new partnerships so that uh, so the patient. It does, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah all Hi. about you know, making sure the patients yeah. uh, are, 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 are well treated and have a home to go to. Work together. You know, one of the things when this all happened, I had been doing community health talks in person around Inspire. And then when I got locked away on like March 8th, I was like, what can I do? And I was like, why don't I do community health talks on Zoom? Like, let's pick a different subject every night. And so, I asked Dr. Lehman, and because I'm thinking to myself, we all need patients. Everybody needs patients. So why don't I start asking different referral sources, hey, do you want to do community health talk with me? I'll invite my patients, you invite your patients, and let's just cover a topic. So I'm on like my second full month wow. of, of doing these, and I just keep coming up with different subjects, and people love it. Like I had mm -hmm. a guy who is in LA and has been on all of my talks for like the past two weeks. He emailed me yesterday and he goes, you know, I'm really thankful for the pandemic. Has it not been for the pandemic, Lori Ledley wouldn't have done community health talks and I wouldn't have all the knowledge that I have about all these different things. <laughs> so, because it's not just about sleep. I mean, for me, it's about overall health and how do we be healthy? Sleep is a huge part of that, but what are our options? And, you know, so many people don't even know that you could have an oral appliance or what's important and what kind of appliance to get. Like actually our talk that we did, I didn't even know that there was a new, you know, the new one that she showed. Um, I'm even sitting here thinking, do they have an appliance that is gonna track compliance? Are they coming out with an appliance that would like record how many times a patient put it in their mouth? What did that be cool? Story. You have it, see? We have that for years, oh my gosh. No, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. I, her talks have been so good because she is covering all of it. Like she, she's doing, she's the yoga master too. So Lori <laughs> is all about meditation and yoga and all kinds of stuff. So she covers all of it and it's really cool. I mean, she's got sleep coaches in, I mean, they're just, they handle the patient as a whole and not just one little thing, which is just awesome, right? I mean, you, and it's only you, been because of my own journey, you know, right. I, I've never been healthy. I look like the picture of health, but I have been sick since I was a child. And I, you know, I've rheumatoid arthritis. I've had cancer twice, two different kinds of cancers. Like I learned in my own health journey, like we need to be healthy and why not help people get there? What else do I have to do? <laughs> With I'll everything really walked away, you know. Yeah. Great. So yeah, work with your yeah. work together. Yeah, let's like do things together. Build relationships. It's all about the relationship. Relationship with your patient. Relationship with your dentist. Relation. Relationship with your you know sleep provider. Your DME. There's yeah. not just one thing. It all works together. You know. That and right there. Here. That right there is why we did this. Right. I mean, we're not out here hawking. Uh, oral devices. This was purposefully designed to not be mm -hmm. a commercial for Somnimed. It was about yeah. trying to share maybe a couple of useful pearls, a couple of golden nuggets for, for our, our dentist customers to go back to the office tomorrow and implement. And hopefully that leads to greater referrals and more patients treated. 
And if that benefits us and our competitors, hey, awesome. Then we've done then we've done good. We've done right by humanity. So uh, that was that was our goal. Um, this being our last and final one, I, I think that we have have accomplished that. I'm really proud of this series. I'm proud that we kept it non-commercial. Um, and uh, and the feedback that I've gotten from from Dennis from coast to coast has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, so I thank you all. Um, Dr. Lehman, Lori, thank you so much. I promise I made the promise when we did this, we would try to keep it to 45 minutes, knowing that people have families and and uh, and dinners to get to. So I to <laughs> no way, perfect. I want to thank everybody for joining in. Um, the last thing I, I will say is just a wee bit commercial, and that's come find Somnomet on social media and follow us. We'll continue to try to put stuff like this out into the market that helps you grow your dental sleep practice. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a fabulous evening. Dr. Lame and Lori, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.